So, so far we have learned about how to analyze indeterminate axially loaded elements. Also, we found that analyzing these types of structures is a little bit tricky and it's good for us to practice different problems. This is another example on how to analyze an indeterminate axially loaded element. In this problem, steel shaft with a diameter of 30 millimeter and a length of 300 millimeter is strengthened by adding a coiled spring as shown in this figure. This spring is connected to the shaft on the bottom and on the top part. If a plate on top is subjected to a force of P, we want to determine how much is the internal force in the coiled spring and in the shaft. Also, we want to determine how much is the displacement of plate B. In other words, we want to see how much force P is compressing the system. The very first step would be starting from the equilibrium equation. We try to find out the internal forces just by equilibrium equation. We are going to use the free body diagram. In order to find the free body, I'm going to cut that element somewhere between A and B, and then put two unknown forces, one for the shaft and one for the coiled spring. Note that these forces should be outward from the surface. Some of these forces should be equal to zero. So we have some of the forces in the vertical direction is equal to zero. F1 plus F2 plus P is equal to zero. In this equation, there are two unknowns, F1 and F2, and P is given. So the problem is indeterminate because there is just one equation, but there are two unknowns. In the second step, we try to find a relationship between force and displacement. For the shaft, the displacement is determined by using the Flee equation. Delta 1 is F1 L1 divided by E1 and A1. L is given, modulus of elasticity for the shaft is given, and area could be calculated based on the diameter. Now I'm going to plug in the value and write down the deformation in terms of the unknown internal force F1. In a similar way, we can calculate delta 2 in terms of the unknown force F2. But in the coil spring, the constant of spring is directly given. Let me review what is the constant of spring. So recall from physics, in spring, the deformation is proportional to the applied force, also a constant that is intrinsic property of that spring, which is called the spring constant. In other words, deformation is equal to force divided by a spring constant. So I'm going to write this down here. F2 is unknown, and the spring constant is given to be 150 kilonewton over millimeter, or 150,000 newton over millimeter. Now we get to the third part, which is finding the compatibility of deformation. This is the main part of this problem. In order to find the relationship between the deformations, we need to figure out how the deformation is happening in this structure. If force P is applied, both spring and shaft are pushed downward. At the bottom, they are fixed, and at top, they are connected together. In other words, the deformation in spring and the deformation in the shaft should be equal to each other. One is within the other one. So I can say the compatibility of deformation is delta 1 is equal to delta 2. Now we are going to replace delta 1 and delta 2 as we calculated before to establish another relationship between F1 and F2. This is the equation that we are looking for. I'm going to call that equation number 2. Now we have two equations and from those we can determine the internal forces. This is what we are going to do in step 4. So in this step we are combining equation 1 and 2 and solve it for force. F1 is equal to negative 28.87 kilonewton and F2 is equal to negative 6.128 kilonewton. Both of them are negative, which means both of these two forces are compressive, which makes sense because the external force is compressing both shaft and spring. Okay, the last part is asking for determining how much is the deformation in the top plate. The movement of the top plate is equal to the deformation in the shaft or the deformation in the spring. Either of these two. These two are equal to each other. So I'm going to use delta 2, which is F2 divided by spring constant. F2 was already determined and K is given. Make sure to use the right unit. F2 was calculated in kilonewton, so I'm going to use K as kilonewton over meter from which we can determine the deformation or the movement of plate B.